guys and welcome back to Opal and Mint. I am Ashley and today we're going to be talking about how I flatten my watercolor paintings. There are several methods to either stretching um, paper to keep it flat while you're painting and after you're painting. Um, you can tape it down, you can soak it in water and stretch it. But I found that a lot of times I prefer just to flatten my artwork after it's done. So if you saw one of my recent videos where I talk about what to do after you finish a painting, I mentioned I was going to show you how I flatten a painting. So if you saw that video, this step would go before scanning, if it's small enough to fit in the scanner anyways, um, before scanning and sealing. So I'm going to, sh to flatten my artwork before I seal it with wax. At the time that I made that video, I didn't have a piece that needed to be flattened, so I couldn't put it in that video. Um, a lot of things that I paint are just small little things that don't really warp the paper all that much. So they don't really need to be flattened because I didn't use a whole lot of water on them. But a style that I have been doing a lot more, I do a lot of, a lot of stuff where I'm putting a bunch of water, where I'm putting a lot of water on the page and dripping water down. So it, so I'm adding a lot more water to the paper and therefore it will buckle and warp the paper a lot more. So, but even a piece like this isn't really that bent. So I've been working on a bigger piece and normally the pieces that I do end up flattening or the ones that need to be flattened are ones that are bigger. So just this size, it's a good decent size, but a lot of times these don't get super warped. But I do want you to know that this technique of flattening this giant piece will also work on smaller pieces if your pages are warped. Um, another reason that a lot of my pieces don't get super warped is I'm using really high quality paper. The paper that you use makes a huge difference in, I mean, how paints and water react to it, but how much it warps as well. Um, and this paper that I used for this one, I put a bunch, I'm talking a bunch of water on this painting. It has several layers and lots of water just dripping down it. And it's really not awful. It is warped enough where I'm going to flatten this but honestly, it could probably be framed and be fine. But I'm gonna use this piece to show you the process that I go through to flatten my paintings. So here is the painting in question. I am using, this is Fabriano's Artisco um, cotton watercolor paper, and this is the soft press version. This is a artist grade watercolor paper. You can only get this in big sheets. This is half of the sheet. Um, I had a full sheet and I cut it in half to do this. And then I will further cut this down to fit a frame. But anyways, so here is the painting. These are tiger lilies. And honestly, I've been like <sighs> mulling over this the past couple of days, deciding whether I like it or not. I might redo it. I don't know, but I can at least show you um, how I would flatten this piece. Tiger lilies are special to me because my, my great grandma always had tiger lilies in her in her yard she always had them and so this flower just reminds me of my great grandma and i just wanted to have something on the wall that reminded me of her so i'm gonna flatten this piece with you today and then maybe frame it we shall see i may redo it i don't know i might like see this back on the footage and think wow it's beautiful but in person i'm like what i don't know sometimes the artist brain you get like too zoned in on details where you're like, oh, this is garbage, but then you step back and you're like, oh, it's actually really pretty. So I don't know yet where that's gonna land on this one, but anyways. So I'm going to talk through the steps and I will show you footage of me actually flattening this piece. So, and then I'll show you in the end how, how it looks. So let's start by, I'm gonna darken this so you can see the um, warping a little bit. So here is what this looks like you can see a little bit of wobbliness it is warped some not like super super awful but it is a little bit warped so so the first thing the first thing i do is i find a nice a nice clean empty surface and for this particular piece i'm going to be using just the glass surface of my art desk um, you can use any kind of table just make sure it is clean before you put this face down 
I have also like put wax paper or something or just another piece of paper underneath it to help protect the surface. But um, if you have a clean like glass surface, then you don't really need to put anything down. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna place your painting face down. And then I take this giant brush right here and you're going to paint the back surface with clean water. So um, don't use your dirty paint water. Make sure you get some clean water out and just thoroughly coat the back of your painting. Um, it doesn't need to be dripping, but the, the entire surface does need to be um, covered. So after you have covered the back of your paper with water, you're going to take some heavy books and place those books on top. Now, a lot of times I will put a paper down before the books so the books don't get wet. So you can either put like a wax paper or just another piece of watercolor paper, um, just something to protect the books from getting wet. And then just put a bunch of heavy books down on top of your paper. And really it is as simple as that. You're going to let that dry completely. And then when you pull the books off, you're going to see this beautifully smooth, less warped surface. I don't know that it's ever like absolutely 100% perfect, but you can do it like a second time if there's an area that did not get good enough. But if you're gonna be framing it, as long as it's pretty wobble free, then you should be pretty good. But yeah, I, I did not, anticipate this video to be super long because it's really a very, very simple process. All you do, wet the back of the paper, put some heavy books on it and let it dry. It's that simple. The first time I did this, I was nervous. And for some reason, I thought it would disturb the paint on the other side, but no, it does not. <laughs> uh, as long as you're not putting water on the side where the paint is, of course. Yeah, it is as simple as that. There, like I said in the beginning, there are other ways you can stretch your paper beforehand and tape it down and all of that. But I sometimes like to move my painting from different places. And um, I was painting in the floor earlier, I painted my desk. And so I just like having it free. <laughs> and um, this, since I'm using a high quality paper, um, it doesn't get like too horribly warped where it's difficult to actually paint on, so. If you are working with a cheaper paper, you can also pre-stretch your paper. And if you want to know more about that, if you want to see a video on that specifically, let me know in the comments below and I will um, see what I can do to help you out there. But I hope this was helpful. I know that the first time that I tried to flatten out a piece, I was a little bit nervous. Um, I was afraid that all of my hard work, especially with the bigger piece that you put a lot of work into, I was afraid I was going to ruin it. <laughs> Yeah, let me know if you have any questions in the comments below because I remember I had a bunch of questions. It seems like a simple process, but I was still worried. So, but that is gonna wrap it up for this video. If you did enjoy this, please give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't already and you wanna see our future videos, hit that subscribe button down below and I'll see you guys next time. Bye. I gotta sneeze. Hold please. Wrong way.